Welcome back, friends. I'm Susan Clifton. If you haven't been here before, I'm here in my Baca studio in Pompano Beach, Florida. So today I want to talk about learning how to talk about your art. So stay tuned. Last week, I talked about where you can exhibit your art. If you're just starting out, you know, joining a guild, doing group shows, juried shows, you know, all those types of things, uh, finding an empty space to host your own exhibit, um, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, one of the things that that's, that's important that you do that in the beginning is that it helps you talk about your art. So in step one, when you're participating in a group show, definitely don't just be a wallflower. Talk to other artists, talk to non-artists about your art. Get used to answering questions. Encourage them to ask you questions so you know what it is that you need to talk about when somebody doesn't ask you a question, they just expect you to speak. And pay attention to how they react to your descriptions. Do they look bored or do they look like it's encouraging them to know more? That's, that's the sweet spot. You want to get them to want to know a little bit more. So step two, write an artist statement. Now this is something all artists hate to do, but a lot of times if you haven't been to uh, art school, art college, or you haven't participated in your arts community, you don't even know that an art statement is a thing. What an art statement is, is it's a description of your process, your art, what it means to you, why you create. So this helps you, even if nobody ever reads it. Trust me, some of these jury shows, they expect you to submit an artist statement. So you still need to do this, this exercise. But one of the great things about the exercise, and you should do it again and again, especially as your work evolves, is it helps you put your thoughts together on exactly the best way to describe your art, whether it's in writing or whether you're speaking to someone. Make sure that your artist statement clearly defines what your process is. You know, you don't have to be detail-oriented. A lot of artists don't want to give away their secrets. <laughs> but at least show them, invite them into your process. It's important. Now some people might think that this should have come second, but I like it at the third spot because writing the artist statement helps you determine your elevator pitch. Well, anybody that's in business understands what an elevator pitch is. It comes from the idea of you're stuck in an elevator with someone for only a minute or two and they ask you the question, what does your artwork look like? You know, what kind of art do you do? Can you describe it in one minute or less, two minutes? Like, how do you describe it so that they're not bored? How do you describe it so that they want to know more? And then when you hand them the business card, they go right back to their computer and they look up your art. They look up your web your website. Also, you want to make sure in your elevator speech that you are not sounding confused yourself. Like sometimes, I, and I've caught myself in this position where somebody caught me off guard, asked me that question, and in the moment, I went blank. I, I sounded confused about my own artwork. So this is something that you, you need to practice so that when you do practice and somebody does answer it, it just like rolls off the tongue. So number four, videotape yourself. This is just practice. Nobody has to see it. We all have a phone these days. Just hit play, sit in front of it, talk about your art then watch it back. See where you looked down, looked up, looked everywhere but at the camera because you were uncomfortable, you know? What was that about? Videotape yourself. Do you sound interesting? Does your work sound interesting? This just comes with practice. And I've learned from this YouTube channel how much it, practice you need on camera 
and I'm still not there yet, trust me, but with a little bit more practice and practice and practice, I've been doing this for two years now, and I'm not even talking about necessarily my artwork most of the time, but I actually have a few videos of my art and my process, and I was even on television. I will put the link below where you could see these people, this was not a planned episode. We had a half hour shooting time. They started rolling and I just needed to speak. Very scary. Four people asking me questions. I don't know what those questions are going to be and I have to come up with the answers. So this was something that came from practicing in a mastermind group that I was part of and also at art exhibitions. So what should you talk about when you're doing this video? You should talk about your process, what inspires you. And this is also everything that's in your artist statement. Just put it on video and just do it once a week. Maybe time yourself, see how much you can get done in a two minute video, a three minute video, five minute video. Just talk. Don't worry about, you know, stumbling on your words or anything. Just go with the flow. Okay, number five. This is another practice thing. I think you should put together a presentation. Let's pretend an art center came to you or a museum and they, or a gallery and they said that they want you to put together a presentation for their uh, collectors. Th these people are going to come. Eventually there's going to be a Q&A at the end, but you have to do a presentation. It has to have a slideshow you know, like a little slide deck. Um, anybody in business knows that you have to know how to put together a presentation and you have to stand in front of people and you have to give it. This makes us very uncomfortable, especially when it's on video. Um, I've been one of those people that was scared to death to talk in public. You put me in front of a room more than 10 people and I started to shake. I don't know where that came from, something in my past that scared me to death. And I had to get over it because if I really want to be a successful artist, I have to be able to speak in public and whoever thought it would be on television, you know? So you have to learn how to speak about your art and tell your story. So with a presentation, it's a little bit more in depth. I would tell them about where, what your education was, how you decided, like where were you as a child? Did you always think that you were going to be an artist? What kind of education did you get? Show examples of very, very early artwork and then take it from there. Like anything interesting in your life inspired you and your work and gave your work uh, the uniqueness that, that it has. So I didn't just make up this idea. I used to be part of a mastermind group and the woman that was facilitating that group, she made us each do a presentation. Now we had a very small group. We were like five or six people at that time. So you were doing a, a presentation to people who already knew you, already knew pretty much most of, a, of what you were doing currently, but you had to make it interesting for this small group of people that already knew you. That was a little, even a little bit harder, I think. The thing that made me so happy was I told them a story about things that they didn't know about me. So that like took it to the next level. Also, it got me out of that like fear of public speaking, even though it was just to my friends. And then I had to just, I had to force myself to keep speaking in front of people and the groups started to get bigger. And then it was not so, not so bad. I had to do a presentation here at Baca. I had a solo show on the first floor in the West Gallery for two months. And part of what they offer you as an exhibiting artist is an artist talk. So they invited people in the community. I also invited my list and I had about 25 people, I think. And I, they only had like a television, like a large screen television where my presentation was, but it was in the gallery with all of my artwork hanging on the walls. So that is an ideal situation when you have 
your originals right there in the room with you. And then afterwards, people asked me questions. We did like a little Q&A. And then everybody stayed for a few minutes after and talked to me personally. So it was a really, really nice thing. And I felt completely comfortable. But that was because of my practice, practice, practice. So how do you feel about talking to people about your art? Are you still struggling with it? Please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on the subject. And I hope to see you again soon. So take care. Bye-bye.